Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making the Katie Bow Clutch. This is a fold over clutch so it's got a lot of room in it and you can make it a clutch, you can make it a wristlet or you can make it a crossbody bag. I'm going to show you how to add tabs to this so that you can make it either way. You can also make this with Cricut Design Space. I've got a Cricut Design Space file for you. It's already in the ready to make projects. That is the smaller of the two that you're seeing here. And this larger one is my template. It's shaped just slightly different, but if you're using the Cricut Design Space file, the tutorial is going to be the same way to put it together. It's just going to be a slightly different shape and a bit smaller. So you can see the difference here and I'll go into the video to show you the actual size difference. But you can follow along if you wanna make the Cricut version or if you want mine, I have a free PDF pattern for you. You can download it. It will Everything will be linked in the description below the video as well as all the products that I use. So let's get started. So this is the Katie bow bag. Now if you're making the Cricut Design Space file, you're going to make this version. It's quite a bit smaller. It has a little bit of a different shape to it. The bow set a little bit higher and I didn't make this one a cross body bag. This, it does not call for it in the pattern and I made it just as the Cricut Design Space file is. This is my version. I have a PDF for this in the description below the video. You can click on the link and pick that up and it's going to make a, it's quite a bit bigger. You can see it's about one, two, two and a half inches wider and it's a little bit wider on the bottom. This is quite a bit larger. I did add crossbody straps to mine and made this into a crossbody bag. That is totally optional. You could additionally add the crossbody straps to this bag as well. But this one is really more of a clutch size and I like this. I think it's really, really cute. And this one, I think it's, it's also would be a cute, just clutch size without the strap. But I think it's also cute with the strap. So without further ado, let me show you what you're going to need to make this. First thing you're going to need is to download the pattern for the larger bag from my website. Again, it's linked in the description below the video. If you're using the Cricut Design Space file, I have that linked in the description below the video as well. The pattern's going to look uh, similar. You're going to be able to follow right along with this tutorial and make it the exact same way but your pattern pieces are just going to be shaped slightly different and a little bit smaller. For my PDF, it's going to come in, it's actually five sheets. You're gonna have your cover sheet plus your four pattern pieces, and you're just going to print those out, and then you're going to trim around the edge and tape those together. Now, on each sheet, there is a centimeter check scale and a one inch scale you need to double check and make sure that you're printing at 100% and that the one inch line measures one inches and there's a three inch line here. And if you're using centimeters, you can check it there. So you wanna make sure that your pattern is printed out according to a scale. So once you cut this down and get everything all put together, it's going to look, your pattern piece is going to look something like this. Now I've changed a couple of settings here, so don't pay attention to what that says. Yours will be correct. I just tweaked the settings a little bit, but I've put a picture here in the corner just so that you know if you, you need all four pieces to make this pattern. And then you're going to follow the directions on here for your additional pattern pieces. So besides the pattern, what we're going to need is a zipper that is for my pattern that's at least 12 inches long. We're going to be cutting it down. Mine's a little bit longer, but you want it at least as wide as the narrower side of the pattern. So the side that has the little divots, you want your zipper to be at least that wide. You're also going to need your pattern pieces cut out. You're gonna need two outer fabrics, two lining fabrics cut out using your pattern piece as a guide. So I just laid this down and I cut around my pattern pieces. On my outer fabrics, I chose to line mine with a fusible fleece. And I've just cut the fusible fleece slightly smaller just to keep it out of my seam allowances. That's up to you. And on my lining fabric, 
I put a woven interfacing. I used ShapeFlex SF101. Again, that's up to you. If you use the ShapeFlex on the outer one, which I did on this one, it isn't quite as stiff as I would have liked this bag to be. So that's why I decided to go ahead and use the fusible fleece on this and the ShapeFlex on the lining, just to give it a little bit more structure. Okay, in addition to our outer and lining fabrics and our zipper, we're going to need a few other things. We are going to need, and if we look at our directions, for the bow piece, which is going to be the piece right here in the front, you want a contrasting fabric, and according to the directions, you're going to cut that to 9 inches high by 12.5 inches wide. You're also going to need one rectangle cut to 3 inches by 4 inches. And that's going to be the center of the bow and you can make that contrasting or you can make it the same. In this case, I made it the same. I did line both of these with the shape flex as well. That's up to you. It's just gonna make the bow have a little bit more structure. And then you're going to need, if you wanna put zipper tabs on your zipper, which I'm going to do in this video, you're going to need two rectangles cut to three by two. And you're going to take those rectangles and fold them in half lengthwise and then open it up fold the sides into the center the short sides into the center and then fold that in half and those are going to be your zipper tabs so you're going to do two of those three by two and then if you want to put the crossbody straps on you're going to need the two d rings which i've got here and then you're going to need two more three by two rectangles. And we're going to do the same thing with these, except for we're going to fold them, fold it in half lengthwise this way, and then fold the long sides into the middle and fold those in half. And then you can go ahead and take those over to the sewing machine and stitch right down this open edge to secure that side and then make a matching seam on the other side just for symmetrical reasons. So go ahead and Get your tabs ready. Again, the ones that are going to be the zipper tab, you're going to fold the short ends into the middle and fold it in half. The ones that are going to be the D-rings, you're going to fold the long ends in and fold that in half. And you can go ahead and stitch the D-ring tabs closed, leave the zipper tabs open. All right, so I've got my tabs ready to go and I'm gonna get rid of my pattern piece and I'm gonna set my tabs up here. I'm gonna set my D-rings up here get those out of the way, my bow set aside, and we're going to work on our zipper. So let's get this out of the way. So the top of our pattern is 12 inches wide. So we want to cut our zipper down to 10 and a half inches wide. So it's an inch and a half shorter. So what I like to do is I'm going to cut this end with the zipper tab off leaving the zipper stops on there, but I'm going to cut it right by the zipper stops. So just like that. All right, so now I'm going to use my mat and I'm going to measure over 10 and a half inches, which is right here. And I'm going to cut that down just like that. Now, just to be safe, I'm gonna run over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch across this end so that I don't accidentally pull my zipper tab off during the next couple steps. Okay, so I have secured my zipper on both ends. This end is still secure because it has the zipper stops, but I went ahead and sewed it together just to make attaching the zipper tabs a little bit easier. So now we're gonna take our two zipper tabs, which are the ones that we folded the short ends in, and you're just going to Sandwich the zipper right in the middle and you can clip that into place just like that and the same thing on this end. So you want to make sure that when you cut this off if you're leaving that zipper stop on there that you cut pretty close to that so that you're not stitching over that zipper stop. So I'm just going to sandwich this one in there and clip it. Now you're going to take that over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch right along this edge to secure that in place on both ends. All right, once you have your zipper tabs secured into place, you can just use a ruler and trim them up so that they are flush with the zipper. So 
So once we have our zipper tabs trimmed down, it's time to attach them to our fabric. So I'm gonna grab one of my outer panels and I'm going to fold it in half this way and establish where that center point is. I'm just going to finger crease it. And I'm going to mark that with my Pilot Friction Pin just to remind me where that center point is. And then I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half, figure out where that center point is. I'm just going to mark that with a piece of chalk. All right. And so I want my zipper tab to be on the left. So I'm going to turn it over so that the zipper pull is face down and I'm going to mark those line those center points up just like so and I'm going to clip that into place and then work my way down and you can use as many clips or as little as you want all right so unfortunately I had a camera issue again I think I've got it figured out now but I'm going to have to piece this part in because I lost part of the footage so I just made a mock-up of where we were the zipper slightly shorter so just disregard it but we just pinned the zipper down so the pull tab is down to the right side of our fabric and then you're going to take a lining piece and you're going to line that up on top and you're just going to clip that into place And then you're going to stitch from this end to this end, making sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Take your time, move that zipper out of the way when you come to the zipper so that you don't end up with a wavy um, zipper installation on the top. So go ahead and stitch and then stitch down to about when you get to the zipper and then reach inside, leave the needle down and reach inside here and lift your presser foot up and push that zipper out of your way and then continue sewing down so that you have a nice straight line right there on the top. Once you've attached the one side of your zipper, you're going to open it up, fold it over, and then you're going to give it a nice press, and then give it a top stitch right along this top edge. Okay, so we are now ready to assemble our bow. So what you're going to do is take your bow piece and fold it in half. So you're folding the short ends in half, long sides are touching. And you're just going to take this over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance right across that long edge. Once you have this seam sewn, you're just going to reach inside and turn this right side out. You want to orient it so the seam is right in the middle. You can give it a nice press. Set that aside. Take your bow center piece and you're going to fold that in half so that the long ends are touching and you're going to stitch right down that edge. So it looks just like this. So now you need to turn this right side out. I find it helps to just put a safety pin in one side, just like so, and then just guide that safety pin back down the other edge, and that'll help you turn it right side out without too much trouble. Remove your safety pin, straighten it back up, and again, you want to orient that seam so that it's right in the middle. So my seam's right here. And then I'm going to fold it in half so that I'm looking at the seam, matching those short edges together. So it's just folded in half like this. I'm looking at the seams. The seams are matched up. And I'm just going to stitch right along this edge, closing this into a circle. So it looks like this. Now you're just going to turn this right side out so that you have made a little circle, just like that. Okay, now you're going to take your bow piece. We're gonna match the seam sides up and we're just going to kind of accordion fold this. I'm just gonna fold down, up, down, up. It doesn't really matter, you can fix it afterwards. And you're just going to feed the tube over the bow, down to the center, try to keep everything nice and straight and then you can fiddle with it a little bit to get the bow to look the way you want I kind of like to push the middle up and then push it down and back up just so that it looks kind of gathered in the middle just like so 
but you can do it however you want. And you'll have time to fiddle with it a little bit more later, but it does help to have it pretty much in position the way you want it. Okay, so I've got my bow situated. So now, again, I'm using my mock-up because I lost some footage, but you're going to put the bow on the top of your outer, your other outer fabric, and it should line up about with the divots that are on your pattern, but I like to put it so that the top of the bow is about an inch and three quarters down from the top, which is the narrower end. So I'm just going to line that up and I'm just measuring it on my mat right now. And I'm an inch and three quarters down from the top. I'm gonna line that up. Line the edges up all the way down. My mock-up's a little bit wide. It won't have won't be this loose on yours. Okay, so now I think I can pick back up to my original footage and it'll everything will look a little bit more sensible. Okay, so then you want to take a ruler and measure, and I'm about one and three quarter inches from the what's going to be the top of the bag to the top of my bow. So again, you want to make sure you're putting the bow on the end that has the divots and make sure that it's even. And then you're going to take that over to the sewing machine and you're just going to tack right along the edge, as close to the edge as you can get, just to hold that bow in place. Okay, so now we have our bow basted down on this the skinnier edge of the two. We're going to measure up about eight inches from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to put a mark. Same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and put a mark. We're going to take one of our tabs, thread it through the D ring, and I'm going to line that D ring up with my mark. Now you want the D ring facing the inside of the bag. And I'm just going to clip that into place. Repeat that for the other side. Thread the D-ring through the tab. Place the tab so the D-ring is facing the middle of the bag and line that up. And you can take that over to the sewing machine and go ahead and baste your tabs into place. Okay, so now our outer panel looks something like this. We're going to now take this panel and to place it pretty side together with our other outer panel. So the two outer panels are facing and we're going to line this up. Make sure your fabric's lined up on the side and we're going to clip that into place. I'm going to flip it over. Now we're looking at our lining fabric. And again, we want to make sure that everything's lined up here on the top. I'm going to take our other lining fabric, make sure we have it oriented right, the divots are on the top. And we're just going to line everything up and clip it into place. Okay, so we have this all clipped together. We've got our zipper in the middle and our two lining pieces are facing. Everything's lined up and we're just going to take this over to the sewing machine, backstitch at the beginning and the end and stitch that down from one end to the other. All right, once we have our zipper sewn in place and we open it up, it should be looking something like this. So now what you want to do is make sure you have your two lining pieces on one side, your two outer pieces like this, and then you're just going to top stitch right along this top edge. I need to give mine a little press. I got it a little wrinkled, 
but you're just going to top stitch on this side just like you did on that side. All right, once we have our top stitching done, we're going to grab our two outer fabrics and pull them together and our two lining fabrics and pull them together. So it looks like this. The first thing you want to do is match up your seams on the zipper side and I like to make it so the the zipper teeth are pointed towards the lining side so my seams are going to line up straight I'm going to do that on both sides zipper teeth I'm pushing towards the lining side and letting everything fold into place from there All right, and then you're just going to continue to clip all the way around. Make sure these tabs are pushed in the inside. All right, once you have everything clipped in place, flip it over and just make sure that everything is indeed caught. Sometimes things shift a little bit and then you sew it from one side and you miss things on the other side. So just give it a double check. Want to make sure where this bow is that your fabric's not wrinkled up. Everything's nice and flat. All right, and then on the lining end, we need to mark a place for our opening so that we can turn it right side out. So I'm just going to go down on my lining piece. I'm going to mark a reminder about four inches wide and I'm not going to sew between those two lines. So we're going to start sewing here, back stitch, around, up, over, around, and you want to use about a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to stop right back here. Again, we're not sewing between here. You want to use about a quarter inch seam allowance so that you clear those zipper tabs on the side. So one more time, here, 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 all the way around, back here, and back stitch. Do not sew between the lines. Okay, so I have sewn all the way around, leaving an opening in my lining right here. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and trim off these zipper tabs that are sticking out. And if you need to do any other trimming, go ahead. All right, so now we're going to box our corners. Now I'm going to use my templates. I do have these available in my shop. If you are interested, I'll leave a link in the description below the video. But if you don't have this, you can absolutely just use a ruler and you're going to measure from your seam line, which let me draw it on here so you can see what I'm doing. There's my seam line. You're going to measure one inch, one inch up and one inch over. And then you're going to draw a square. And make sure you're measuring from your seam line. My seam line is right here and right here. Do you want to make sure you measure from the seam line? The problem with boxing the corners before is if you happen to make your seam allowance a little bit different from one side to the other, your corners are going to be different. So I like to measure and cut afterwards. Now, if you're using the Cricut Design Space file, these corners are already cut out for you. So you don't need to do that if you're using the Cricut Design Space file. So again, you're going to do it on both the lining and the outer. I'm just lining it up one inch in, one inch out from my side and bottom seam lines. And if you're using a ruler, you're just going to do it the same way. Let's see. Where's my seam line? So I'm going to measure. That's an inch and a half. It's the same. One inch, one inch, and make the same lines. Once you have all your corners marked, you're going to take a sharp pair of scissors and just cut those corners out and be careful. Don't overshoot it because that'll mess your corner up. Okay. 
Okay, so we have all four corners cut out on both the lining and the outer fabric. So what you're going to do is open up this corner, just reach inside, open it up, and you're going to match that bottom seam with the side seam, just like that. And you want to make sure you get this nice and straight. You're going to push one seam to the left, one to the right, and give that a clip. Repeat on the other side, open it up, match the bottom and the side seam. And I'm looking to see which way I pushed the bottom seam. I pushed it that way, so I'm going to push it that way on this side so that it's not twisted in the bottom. Match those corners up and clip. I'm going to repeat it on your outer fabric side. All right, now you want to take this back over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch each of those straight edges using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch and sew from end to end right across all four of your box corners. Okay, so we've got all four corners boxed. We're now going to reach inside this hole and go all the way to the other end and turn it right side out. Once you have it turned right side out, go all the way to the end using your fingers or a bone folder or a corner turner and make sure your corners are popped out nice and square and give it a look. Make sure everything is caught in the seams. Okay, so once you have this all turned right side out, you've got your corners poked out, everything looks good, you've checked all your seams, you can go ahead and stitch up this bottom opening and you're just going to kind of pull on it. Those corners will turn in naturally. If they don't, you can help it out. And I like to give it a little press and then I'm going to take it over the sewing machine and just stitch that closed. And once you have that sewn shut, you can just tuck this back in. Get everything pushed in the way it goes. Make sure your top corners are pushed out. You should be able to, should have like a slight gap right there. If you did your zipper tabs correctly, that makes them stand up nice and flat. Get everything pushed down the way it's supposed to go. Zip it up, fold it over. And that, there you have your bow clutch. Now I need to give mine a little bit of a press, but super cute. And if I want to attach my crossbody strap, easy peasy, I can just simply attach the strap and I'm good to go. Or I can just tuck these in and use it as a clutch. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great size for gift giving. It's a great size just to have a few on hand for grab and go and maybe an even an evening out just changing the fabric is going to change the look of this bag entirely. So you can grab the free PDF in the description below the video. I also have a link to the Cricut Design Space file for those of you who want to make the smaller version with the Cricut Design Space. Um, you have to have the Cricut Maker to make this. I also have a link to all the products that I used in the video. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video if you found it helpful. And until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.